glory and honor belongs to your name and power and might is your name. I disappear and you appear today, O oh God. Let your word come with healing, delivery, and transformation. Let your word come with a brand new testimony. We bow every plan of the enemy over our meeting today in the name of Jesus. We cover our life with the blood of Jesus. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus' name. Have your beautiful seats. The theme for the revival is the storm is over. Say neighbor. neighbor. The storm is over. I don't know what you are going through. But the storm is over. Mark, Mark 4.39. Mark 4.39. For me, we're reading really small and just go strictly into our prayer. Because this is a prophetic meeting. Every time there is a prophetic meeting, there is a prophetic blessing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. But I want you to understand what a storm look like. Because many people feel when they marry, they got children, they eat it on time. That means everything is well. No, there is a storm of happiness in your life. There is a storm of unhappiness. There are people who have everything, but there is a storm in their life that brought them suffer tears in Jesus' name. There is a storm in your life where all your education background, you don't see favor. Every time you work hard for favor, you been well rejected in Jesus' name. A storm, a storm is a situation that you cannot find happiness. Every time you see happiness, you try to see happiness, you see sorrow. Your sorrow is more than what? Your happiness. Every man on the side of my forehead has a storm. Your storm may be, uh, I, I have not achieved my goal. I want to build my own house. I want to buy my own car. I want to travel. I want to succeed. But yet it's there. Nothing is happening for me. It is a storm. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is a storm that you live or you get up in the morning and work hard and nothing you show as an evidence. There are people who are away from January to the nine months. Ask them, where is their business? What can you show as an evidence for your business? They say, nothing. I understand why. I understand why. I don't know the storm you are going through. But God said it's over. The Lord said it's over. The Lord is saying it is over. It is over in your life. It is over in this ministry. It is over in your business. It is over in your traveling. It is over in your marriage. It is over in your education. It is over in your own ministry. It is over in your destiny. If you believe this shall be glory. The Bible say, Jesus was in the boat with his disciples. And they decided to travel to another side. And scripture say, why Jesus? They didn't say he was sleeping. They said, why? The question, why me? The devil understood. And Jesus was not sleeping. They were not going to pay attention. So every time God wants to bless you, there is a situation that will come in your life. And the people will say, why? You will ask yourself, why me? Why I am going to what I am going to? Why my situation can change? Every time there is a why, then there is a blessing. Because that way there is no why, there is no blessing. Why come with temptation? Why come with disgrace? Why come with disrespect? People think you are equal, they can disrespect you at any time. And if you ask you why, so that you ask yourself, why me? Listen, every time that question, you are put, you're in a situation and you ask yourself, why me? Don't give up. It is a time you must pray more. It is a time you must fast more. It is a time you must ask God for more direction. It is a time you must ask God for wisdom. Because God is about to test people who are not necessary around you. 
there are people who is not necessarily need to be around you. But if that word don't come, you will not take the away. You will see them as a celebrated people. You will see them as people you can come on. But God brought why? Because he know at the end of the day they will not be there for you. I want to talk to somebody. Yes, when people leave in ministry, don't feel frustrated. When people leave in ministry, don't feel frustrated. Amen. Because you know what? Ooh. God is working here for your own good. Amen. I want to tell you. From the day she entered the church, that son of mine, we close, so I can talk to him most of the time. I said, Daniel, that the other daughter have come. But there is something about that daughter that my spirit man is not free with. He said, Mama, what happened? I said, No. I said, When people come in the church, my spirit will perform that one. Even for out of face, me say I get problem with it. He said, Mama, say yeah. Now knowing God was saying something to me from the very first day she entered in the church. I did not know that when God gave me prophecy for you, she will go behind the horse. After telling her, she will be you. If God told me, say, you must drink water, she will go behind the horse. Then he said, no, God said, you must not drink water, you must drink all. But I did not know. I did not know it was happening behind my back. After God told you, after teaching in the church, she was working hard. One of the staff in the school and all. But I did not know that there was something that God never allowed my spirit to get close with her. And one day we came to fast and pray. After fast and pray, then the Lord, I came on the altar here for my water to drink. Then the Lord said, from today, do not get your key to your daughter. Do not get the key to her because she in another church and she will pollute your altar. I'm like, ah! Then I stood on the altar here. And I'm saying when why come to you, there is a delay in why. You will ask why this child? Why this child? Because God sees the dead, the heart of that child. You don't see the heart, but it is God. And when I say about it again, I said the Lord said that woman in different church. Oh. So when I, I'm gonna trust her again. All the sisters they who knew that she in different church, they said, Oh, yeah, true at home. That true at home. I said, but he left for her. I said, them right there, I call her. I said, come on, there is a message for you. Not knowing, my daughter decided to be the prophet in the church. She decided to be the general overseer and the prophetess of the vision. It's not bad. But work for it. Sacrifice for it. Labor for it. I am laboring to be where we are today. So you can come and labor. I was telling my son, I said, there is somebody here, God is telling me. He's going to be the pastor of the church. I said, even though he just started coming, but God is telling me, I can depend on him. Then I did not tell you. I said, even though he started coming, but God said, I can depend on him. You understand me? So you see what God is telling me? And you know why? One day we came forth to church after Sunday we come meeting. I did not know that she had told people in the church they must leave the church so they can start praying together. Even the assisting to me and all. She started encouraging her for them to leave. Nobody told all of the church. Saturday, the prophet said, he said she will leave. The prophet said, a daughter in the church, I'm talking about why. Say a daughter in the church will leave the church. I have to one of my son 